We'll call the meeting to order. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Treaty 1 territory in the traditional homeland of the Métis Nation. I'll introduce the panel members first. Neil Harding to my left, Cynthia Stevens to my far left. I'm Marcel Rondo. I'll be chairing. The session today is Marina Tenawara. And our administrative assistant today is Kelsey Harrison. We'll be hearing applications for revision of the assessment rule in accordance with the Municipal Act. The matters for which revision is requested have been described in each application, and we will limit discussions to those matters. The statements that the applicants or the assessor make at this hearing are sworn testimony. Anyone speaking to the matter must be sworn in. Be advised that comparisons of assessment of properties are not considered evidence of market value by the Board of Revision. The Board of Revision is appointed annually by Council and is independent of it and the City Administration. It makes its decision on the basis of the evidence provided at this hearing issues a written order that will be mailed to all parties as soon as possible. Please note that the Board's decision with respect to an application may be appealed to the Manitoba Municipal Board if the matter pertains to assessed value or classification, or the Court of Queen's Bench if the matter pertains to application of exemption from taxation. Should you wish to appeal, information on how to do so will be included with the Board order. With respect to the hearing process, I will confirm the matters to be addressed with each applicant following the swearing in. We will then have the assessor's testimony, followed by questions that the applicant may have, and then the applicant's testimony followed by questions. Each side will have an opportunity to summarize if they wish. Once all the evidence about an application has been brought forward, the applicant may leave. The process will repeat for each item on the docket today. The session will close after the applications have been heard, and the board will deliberate in private and make its decisions. You will receive the order by registered mail as soon as possible. As information, all public hearings are live streamed, recorded, and will be part of the public record. Please put your phones on silent. You want to swear them in, please. Could you please state your name? Morina Gantika Pengwara. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And do you swear to tell the truth? Yes. Could you please state your name? Uh, Marcelo Duvar. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. We will start with... 397 William Avenue, one assessed, assessed value. When you're ready, Marina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I will pass my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Did you show this the right one? This is 102. Am I on the right property? 397. Mm -hmm. It's two. Well, there's two income streams. I said the other side. I went, what? Yeah, I see the other income stream now. Okay, got it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, my, recommend, my recommendation mainly based on the parking, adjacent parking lot adjustment. Uh, do you want me to present the whole hearing? Yeah, you'll yeah, have to still do the whole hearing. Okay, please. sure. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Roll number 130701761060. Property address 397 William Avenue. Owner YTC Enterprise Sales Limited. Property originally assessed for... 1,660,000. This property has the two uh, portions. One is our retail property. The other one is the residential property. Classified as the 60T and 10T. This property was originally built in 2007. Use effective age as the 2007. My page number two. It's the current comparables. Current comparables are uh, within the city, uh, similar type of use. Rent vary from $10 to $21. Page number three, you can see the location picture and the property. This is the young supermarket. Page number four, we will see the better pictures. 
I'm Young Supermarket has the two parking lots in 388 Elgin and the 408 Elgin Avenue. Those are separately assessed. One property, one um, 388 is a residential uh, combined with the parking, and the other one is a vacant commercial. So those parking is needed to operate the business as a retail store and owned by the same owners and directed by the same director board. So um, my recommendation today, removing parking value from the retail portion. You can see uh, my new calculation show other adjustment parking expenses of 388 and 488 elements. My new value for retail portion is 1,412,000. Retail, oh, sorry, residential portion re remain no change, it's the same. New property value is 10 T portion, 1, 136,000. 60 T portion is 100. 1,276,000 altogether 1,412,000 for this property. 1 million? 1 million 412. But that's what you said was the amount before. Um, sorry. Give, give me one, the new 60T number then. Okay, 60T, 1,276,000. That's not what you said at all. And altogether, no. One million four hundred twelve for entire property. Combination of retail portion and the residential okay. portion. That makes more sense. Okay. Thank you. Mark, shall are you okay with that? Uh, I actually I don't think I can. Okay. You want to finish it up? Do you have yes. anything else? Uh, no, I will. Uh, so, for a detail, my residential residential portion we are not disputing for the residential value. Uh, we have differences in retail portion. I use ten dollars and eighty eight cents for main four retail portion of eleven thousand four hundred and forty three square feet. You can see in my new recommendation the numbers. And the basement rate is three dollars and seventy five cents and the storage mezzanine rate of $6.12. All of them are model driven. We actually, I'm actually lower in basement rate and uh, mezzanine rate. But $10.88 for retail is the fair market rate, fair rates for this property. So, and I'm asking kindly reduce to value as my recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions? Um, Cynthia, any questions? Um, so the reduction of the value of the parking, is this because this land is assessed separately somewhere else? Uh, yes. It is. Okay. And, yes. is that, and that's the value of the two assessments? Yes. All right. Okay. Got that. Um, if I tell you the very clear answer, the uh, vacant commercial property, it been to Board of Revision 2020, that's the value they um, came up with 165,000. And the, the other one is the proportion of residential value, that's the value, exact same value asking from the applicant, 249,000 they were asking. For the parking lot, that's the fair okay, so I, just, I just wanted yeah. to confirm that they were assessed separately. So, okay. Yeah, it's assessed Okay. Uh, and um, do you have any comps for your rent here? Yes, I do. Sorry, where were where, where they? Uh, page number two. two. Okay. It's the comps in the city. So nothing really in that neighborhood, I guess. Eh? Um, this size building for retail, I did not find it. Okay, um, and the cap rate, where does this fall in the chart, does it somewhere here? 
uh, we can go to retail chart. Okay, so you put it. No, it's a we point. It's a nine point three five cap rate. It's a really high cap rate for that area because. Because it, so it's largely due to the area because the I building's think. fairly new, correct? Yeah, yeah. It, building's okay. fairly new. It's a not the great. Uh, is the is the residential portion the same age or is it older? Um, no, it's the same age. The same age. Okay. Same age. Right. Okay. It's okay. apartment. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I guess the, the apartment portion is it, where is it located in relation to the? Uh, apartment portion is the second floor. They have a residential unit in there. Okay. Uh, that's the, uh, we assess as the apartment multifamily. That's the way we assess these kind of uh, multi use properties. Okay. Uh, that's, we are not disputing over the residential yeah, portion. Yeah, no, I, I, that's why. I'm just curious. I'm not, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, one, it's a two bedroom, one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can I get you to give me the value on the parking lots again? Uh, parking lots? Okay. Um, 248,466. 248,456? 466. It's asked in the, my other adjustment in here. Line. Okay. So what was the 165,000? Uh, it is only for the, the Pavicom parking lot. It is for 408 elegant. It's the proportion of the 388 elegant. 388 elegant is the residential um, residential unit, mm -hmm. but it, it's the entire land used for the parking. And you're subtracting that as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we but use... That comes up to 414,000, and you're only subtracting 284. No. For 248. What am I missing? Uh, I think... You okay. said two numbers. Yeah, it's, I said two numbers the, because it's the two addresses. Yeah. Two addresses. Uh, you not the add combination, them up? combination of the parking portion is 248,000. Actually, it's a 249,000 asking from, from the applicant. Yeah. But we, because of the calculation, we cannot get the exact 249,000. I get the 248,488. It's a rounding issue. Um, that's what we are using. It's a proportion of the residential unit and the full value of the VCOM parking. So which number is which in the bottom parking lot is assessed at what? Do you have the actual individual number? Okay, I will try to find the exact numbers <laughs> because I think um, it is a combination. 185,000 as I remember for the parking for the VCOM portion. The one on the bottom? Okay. Portion and the other one is the proportionate of residential value. And it's the remaining amount? Yes. Okay. Remaining is the proportion. But your total comes to 248,466? Yes. Because of the rounding, because we use the system, it's the rounding. Okay. Marcello, on with your presentation. Page, um, <laughs> I apologize that the pages were not numbered for some reason. The summary page is the first page over. Um, and you can see that, um, so there's uh, one story basement and mezzanine. Uh, gross floor area is 22,633 square feet. Rentable area is 20,974 square feet for the commercial only. Um, in terms of the 2020 assessment, we've broken it up here. The residential portion is 136,000, which we're not challenging. And the other is 1,524,000 for a total of 1,660,000. Uh, we turn over to the next page. So the subject property is located at uh, 397 William Avenue. And the building, again, virtually occupies the whole site except for the rear loading area. There's two parking lots included in this, 388 Elgin Avenue and 408 Elgin Avenue. 
408 Elgin Avenue is an entire parking lot, so there is nothing there except for parking. 388 Elgin Street, Elgin Avenue, is a parking lot, but there's also a house on it. So the city assessment website actually separates the two out between the residential being the house and the parking lot that's part of the same roll number. Now the commercial or the parking lot value is $81,000 on 388 Elgin Avenue. What page are you on now? Actually, I'm still on property description. I don't see those numbers in there. No, I actually just looked it up online just to distinguish why there's a slightly... Sorry. Again, there's two parking lots here for a total value of $249,000. $81,000 of that is coming from 388 Elgin Avenue. The rest of it is coming from 408 Elgin Avenue. We've combined the two, but we haven't challenged the parking value either. But if you were wondering what makes up that $249,000, that's what makes up the values. So the total site is 13,038 square feet, and it is presently zoned as commercial mixed use. If you turn to the workup page, so this will be this page here. It has a chart on it, and it will have two charts on it, one with the rent and one with some comparables on there. So the rent that we're using on this is a total blended rent of $7.20. That would be $9.50 for the main area, $7 per square foot for the mezzanine, and $4 per square foot for the basement area, giving us a blended rent of $7.20. If you go to the income summary, which is essentially the last page, second last page, I can go over this with you. So we have a total income of $151,081 for 20,974 square feet, and that is $7.20. We've applied a 6% vacancy to this, 7% non-recoverables, and a $6.50 shortfall rate. That gives us a net operating income of $123,895. We've applied a slightly lower capitalization rate of 9.25. Gives us an income value of $1,339,401, to which we've subtracted $249,000 again for the parking, giving us a total value of $1,090,401 for the 60T portion of the property. Now if we again look at the front page, the summary at the front, again the city has under residential $136,000 and under other $1,524,000 for a total of $1,660,000. Again, we're not challenging the residential portion. The only dispute is on the 60T portion. So ours is $1,090,000, giving us a total of $1,226,000. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My only question focuses on the main floor rental rate of $9.50. So your average and median both sell for $12.43 and $11.72 for the dissimilar type of buildings. And you concluded for $10 per square foot, no more than, but I'm asking what's the evidence support for $9.50? In terms of the locations in the rent comparables, we had difficulty finding a space that was similar in the area where the subject is located. Given the location, our belief is that the rent would be slightly lower. So in terms of overall, it would be on the lower end of the scale for all of these. Probably 3140 Portage Avenue is probably the closest comparison, although, again, that is 
uh, slightly different type of property, different size. Um, so um, this is a larger property, given that it's a larger property, uh, it would probably have a lower rent per square foot overall. It is also single occupant uh, for the commercial portion but that we're arguing. So that is my reason. Um, also, in terms of the overall blended rent, um, we, we are, we are very close. 50 cents apart. So yeah. our, our difference, I think, is in non-recoverables. And uh, even in terms of capitalization rate, I'm actually slightly lower than them. So I believe it comes down to a slight difference in rent and, um, and the non-recoverables. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all my questions. Neil? Uh, actually, the assessor stole my question, so... Just like that. Just and like that. That was mine as well, so I'm good, thank you. You're good, too, thank you. Yeah. That's good. I might as well ask, I hate to ask the question, but do we have to go over the 5% recoverable issue? You guys want to discuss it, or are we um, just going to take it that we've heard it all before? Uh, <laughs> because you... Honestly, for this one, the way I'm not putting them on the non-corporation non penalty, but the way they reported um, for the INE, we cannot show, I don't have any evidence to show about the non-recoverable because they don't send us any income expenses. It's only the one page they send it to us. Um, because we, as the department position, we are using non-recoverables. We have we use in non recoverables we have evidence to show about the, all the recoveries reported, but this is own occupied property. We don't have evidence to show about its recovered or anything the way it's reported to us. But we are we are not talking that so much long about the non recoverable. But we are we use the non recoverable. We don't um, use the non recoverable five percent. So um, seeing that this is an owner occupied situation um, and we're looking at it from a few simple perspective. Um, the rents in place are derived from market or adjusted from market comparables. Um, the vacancy is taken from market evidence. The non-recoverables, of course, is our opinion. Um, we submitted reports on this. Um, I think we've exhausted ourselves in terms of why uh, I can go over it, um, reasoning for it, but. Uh, we, we obviously have a difference of opinion with the city in terms of non-recoverables and uh, what are proper uh, non-recoverable items uh, versus management expenses that are actually recovered uh, in the rent. Um, um, again, I, I think we've probably made our point clear on this, so yeah. I don't have any more on that. You've all heard enough? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. The, 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 the <laughs> I'm one, good. One, one, two, I'm good. I just wanted to make sure we got that cleared up. Let's move on to the next property, 115 Maryland. Thank you. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Call number 12. 09-03-79-100. Property address 115 Maryland Street. Property owner W Z Inc. Property originally valued as the 711,000, which is the land value. Um, the when we had sent <coughs> assessment um, information notice. It went on the land value because this property has a bigger land lot which is needed to operate the business. But today I'm not uh, using the land value. I'm not challenging for the land value. I'm asking to page number five has the income value for this property. If you go to page number five, this is the good fare, total market total flow area is 6,200 square feet using $10.11 market rents uh, using model driven vacancy rate of 6%, shortfall $6.50 and 
expenses. Cap rate is 9.25. Income value is 598,000. My recommendation today is to reduce for market value for using income value, not the land value, because uh, you can see why it went to land value on page number three. It shows the bigger parking lot. The, if, we, if they demolish this building, the land value is higher than the income value, but they operate as a food fair. My recommendation to reduce the land value to this property. They send the income expenses mailer, but not that very clear. Don't have all the expenses and everything, but they, I'm not looking for non-compliance. My page number 10, um, 12, page number 13 shows you some example of capitalization evidence, but we are not disputing for capitalization. And also non-recordable expenses, page number 13. <coughs> It shows the list of properties. We are we are fine. Our conclusion is 1.06% is enough for the non-recordable uh, expenses. Based on those uh, evidence, I'm asking to reduce to income value of 598,000 for this property. Questions? I don't. Um, no, I think I'm good, thank you. So, it, this way, so the model is what reverted it to the land value? Because if the value is land value is it's higher, higher than, it's yeah. a model reverted but the to model land value. That, that was the model but and you've yeah, redone it on the income. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. it is legitimately used by as the yeah. retail. Okay, yeah, that's all, thank you. Are you okay with the recommendation? I should ask you that. So uh, given the rent um, and the difference in capitalization rates, I think I am good with this end value. You're good with the end for the lower direct, 598. Yeah. Okay. Direct is accepted. I didn't see that. Next property, 635 Porter Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Property roll number 130502830000. Property address 3, sorry, 635 Porter Avenue. Property owner, Panjan Investments Limited. Uh, Property value originally, property value as 180,000. Property building in 1948. U.S. effective wages in 1948. And I'm um, seeking non-corporation penalties on this property. Um, and the reasons are? They did not send me. Um, I have attached the mailer. They received the mailer, and I have attached the page number is I'm talking about, sorry. Um, I have attached the envelope, and also the mailer we sent it to the owner in the last portion of my brief. Are you challenging it, Rachel? I'm not. You know, take care, uh, you'll be starting it. I'm actually going to ask the board to confirm this assessment. Confirm the assessment? Yes. The quantum. Hmm? The quantum. $180,000. Thank you. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. to confirm? Yes. We still have to deal with the non-COA. I'm not challenging the non-COA. So yeah. it's going to be accepted then. Yes. So. Rec, well, the rec, not the rec, it's confirming. It's a gun Okay. We're really looking for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Steam. Steam right along. Yeah. It's not that. They're afraid of you. Fear is in there. Next. 
here, here. 3377 Pambina Highway. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Phone number 12021963000. Property address 337 Pambina Highway. Property owner 389882 Mento Valley. Property original value at the 942,000. Today I am making a recommendation to reduce the value to 789,000. I'll ask you if you're okay with it. Are you approving it? We're ahead of you. You're ahead of me because I was actually looking at the wrong property. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so I got it. <laughs> Oh, you have one. Oh, okay. My left a little sticky there for myself. Except red. <laughs> Are you accepting the red? Yes. Except seven. Except red. You don't have to continue now. Oh. Thank you. I'm going to cut you short. Property will be 832 Corden Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Property roll number 12022676000. Property address 832 Corridor Avenue. Property value as of 557000 for 2020. Today I'm making a recommendation to reduce 480,000. Um, I will pass the calculation sheet. She's not already. She's okay. Okay. okay, that's okay. I'll pass. She's passed. <laughs> Do you agree with that number? You got uh, that? Yeah, we're okay with the end number. Um, so we're... 480,000? Yeah. You did it 480? Yeah. 480 it is. Accepted. Okay. Oh, wow. Just really okay. And now it's like I'm just reaching out. <laughs> 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 Not a halt. Just slow down. Right? Like a halt. <laughs> okay, the next property is 888 Notre Dame Avenue. Well, I hope we don't come to a screeching halt on this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Property roll number 13031374000. Property address 888 Notre Dame Avenue. Property owner 88888 Ventura Corporation. Property originally value as 187000 and this is a non corporation property. I'm looking for asking, seeking penalty for this property. <coughs> My page number seven has um, registered mailing envelope and the tracking form. And end of my brief, attach the mailer we send it to the owner. We have evidence they received it, and so I'm looking to, I'm seeking penalty on this property. Do you have questions, Mr. Chairman? Okay, we're not, uh, You're not challenging it? We're not challenging it. Okay, so we're going to accept that. Just carry on, uh, now you're going to go. And we'll ask that you confirm the assessment. You want to confirm it? Yeah. Item 7, 625 Sergeant Avenue. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Property roll number 13041302000. Property address 625 Sargent Avenue. Property owner Delca Enterprises Limited. Property uh, value sent over sent as a 408,000. This is also land value taken over. One we send the assessment notice for 2020. Today I'm making a recommendation to reduce to 279,000. I can distribute the case. Am I on the right one? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. are you okay with that? My recommendation based on the income value and doing some correction to the removing basement and putting some vacancy because this property portion of vacant for more than two, three years. Yes, we're okay with the value. So we're two seventy nine? Yeah. The rest will be accepted. Can't catch the paper, but <laughs> it never worked. Takes me longer to put the file together than it does to get to the property. Uh, the next property will be two thirty eight lilac. Move. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Whole number 12022903500. Property address 238 Lilac Street. Property owner More Investment Corporation Limited. A property value originally went out as a one million four one million and forty seven thousand. And this property I am seeking non corporation penalty uh, based on my page number. Page number 9. And we lock and the tracking. And the uh, end, it gets attached with the income expenses information. I'm seeking penalty on this property. Okay, are you challenging the non co op? Uh, yes, sir. You are? Okay. Well, you've been through all your information already. Do you have any questions of the assessor on her information? Uh, no, I don't. No? Do you have any questions? Neil? Yeah. Um, <coughs> is that the address for the registered owner? Uh, 174 yes. Lakes. Yeah, this, is, this property has a uh, director of uh, and I checked the information for the director and the interest it tends to be Is it the same location where the uh, assessment notice was sent to in the first place? No, it's no, different. It is different? Uh, what do you mean? The, 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 uh, the notice of, uh, of assessment. Uh, yes, it's the same. Same? Yes. Much. Okay. All right, thank you. Cynthia? Uh, no questions, thanks. Marcello, on why you think we should have. So, um, the, the question of whether the, the owner has responded to uh, the request for information, I don't think is in doubt that the owner clearly um, responded um, slightly late. Um, so, the question is, is whether this was reasonable. Uh, if you turn to page four of our presentation here, uh, and the question of substantial compliance. I'll wait till you get this. Okay, for this. Yes. So here, on this one. Uh, yeah, no, uh, page four of the larger okay. prop, uh, larger document. Okay. So substantial compliance, the legal and municipal board decision concerning the principles of substantial compliance is board order. A98448, that is included in this document. In this decision, the board found as follows, time for compliance may be read into the penalty provision. The demand was not made for the purpose of making the assessment under appeal and could therefore not be relied on for requesting the penalty. 
The board stated in its order, the owner says the penalty provisions to apply a demand for information must strictly comply with Section 16. A demand that does not strictly comply with Section 16 is invalid and the penalty does not apply. The owner says the assessor may only, um, may only make a demand for the purposes of making an assessment. The owner says the penalty provision is not tied to the requirement to respond within 21 days as set in our Section 16.2. The, the board finds that because the assessor admitted that the role was closed when the demand for information was made, the demand could not have been made for the purpose of making the 1998 assessment. As such, the assessor cannot rely on that demand to support the application for Section 62.2 with respect to the 1998 assessment, uh, and so on and so on. Um, so I think the question here is whether this actually prevented the assessment department from uh, legitimately producing the assessment on this property. Now, in the smaller document that you have here, um, and this is taken from the City of Winnipeg Charter, Section 335, taxes are imposed for a year are deemed to be imposed on January 1st of that year. Tax roll, after the taxes for a, one, for a year have been imposed under Section 334, the tax collector must prepare a real property tax roll for the year, which must contain all the properties in the city that are subject to real property taxation. Um, tax rolls may be combined. If you look at um, the next page over, uh, you can see that the 2020 property assessment roll will be delivered on June 3rd, 2019. Please note that every owner will receive a 2020 property assessment notice in June, and the deadline for filing with the Board of Revision is June 26th. Now, this deals with the time frame of when the city actually delivers the role for, for publishing. Now, uh, in an assessment, in a reassessment year, that information actually is published, I believe, ahead of time. Um, and that is a preliminary view that most of us get uh, on the assessment roles. The question is, is whether this prevented the, the city assessor from actually producing the, the the property assessment for that property for the 2020 tax year in question. Uh, we believe our answer is, or we believe that the answer is no to this. Um, in terms of the owner's actual compliance on this issue, if you look at the previous um, year in taxation, 2016, um, request letter was sent out in April 2017. Uh, response was made in May 3rd, 2017. I don't think this is a question of somebody who's deliberately delinquent. Um, I know for, for some reason they were late, but yes, I don't think they actually, this actually prevented the city from uh, producing that assessment. I'll leave it at that. Do you have some questions? No, I don't. I, I don't have the view, but I don't have a question to ask. I'll get to you later on this. Neil, do you have any questions? Um, I'm just looking through the letters and decisions you put in here. Wasn't the essence of that it, uh, that uh, the discretion of this board evaporates as soon as the city can show the request was received and not responded to? Uh, I believe, was did Lighterson respond at all? Was there a response? I just, I'm not, just looking through to see. Um, Not the information is before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but given that, we, we believe it's actually within the right of the board to actually make that decision. Um, so. Okay, thank you. Cynthia? Okay, I'm just trying to see if there's evidence here that shows that the owner did respond or responded late. Do we yes. have that evidence? Yeah. Or, or it's, actually, I miss it? it's actually in, it's right in the assessor's brief. It is here? Yeah, on page two of on the assessor's brief. brief. Yeah. For 2017. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, was, I was actually looking for the IME in the back. That's yeah. what I was doing. So you can see the previous two, uh, 2016 and 2017. So in 2016. Okay, now I see the data. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I missed that. Okay. Okay, and that's all I have. Thank you. I hear you on your argument as far as for doing the taxes, but how about for doing the model? Because that's what the information is requested for. Yeah. It's not requested to do the assessment. It's requested to create the model. Absolutely. And I, I don't think uh, even at that point the model is anywhere close to being completed. 
So uh, we don't have any uh, real concrete evidence as to when the city closes the model off, but we uh, reasonably thinking, I think we, if, if we're at the end of July and they're making requests to owners for extension until the end of July, um, <coughs> I, I don't, I just don't think the time frame is yeah, an issue. we we, we will accept our extension until June in sometimes June 26, sometimes June 20th, uh, um, Well, actually, there's a there's an extension. I mean, it's an older extension, but uh, in terms of the time frame and the the assessment cycles, in 2014, the, the assessment cycles were exactly the same. They were on a two-year cycle. Uh, if you turn to page point, uh, 123 of your larger of the larger brief. Um, you can see here uh, that this person, um, Chris Thorne Tom, Tom Flynn, was uh, given an extension to July 31, 2014. So, um, you know, it, we have this one, but I'm sure that this is not uh, an isolated case of one person who was given uh, an extension. I believe this has probably happened uh, more than once. And, and if I could ask you a question. This is, information is not used to do the 2020 calculation, is it? Uh, we do. The, the model that you, is created... You ask the particular this property or the particular... This property. A particular this property, I can't tell yes or no because I don't know. Because the, the 2017 data we used to create the model. But this is came late. I don't know. So I the information that we get, you gathered though, in 2017. So this, this would have been your August 2018. This, this information for mm -hmm. You wouldn't. Would you use that information to create the model for 2020? These data, yes, but not. I don't know what the particular property is getting. Because we started model two years in prior, we, I don't know about exact timelines, even I don't know. No. Um, then we use, in general, 2017 data yeah. we use to create the 2020 model. And when, when, when are the modelers finished? Timeline, I can't tell on my top my head. I need to search it. Okay. I have no further can questions. Can I even redirect to the Sure you can. Uh, so, but, but if you have if you have an appeal on a property, we, do you use the IME when you're looking at that when you're coming forward to the board? Um, can you ask so okay, so so like when you're working on an appeal, okay. does having the owner's IME help you when you're looking at rents that the model is? Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's not exactly. so so you use it for things other than oh, just yeah. the model. Yeah. yeah. Because when when the person app applicant appeals the property, we always go and double check the IME information or the. And so if you don't have the IME, then you wouldn't. Oh yeah. Okay. It's, we need to have IME to tell about how do they the expenses and rents and everything. Without, we cannot do it. Okay, and then on, now, are you aware? Do you, or do you have the, the information with you? With the IME that was submitted late, was it complete? Um, honestly, for this particular property, I check the IME all the time, but I could not find the IME. They send it to la send it late. That's why I did not attach it here. Yeah, if that's, that's what I was there, looking for it at the back. And yeah, I, yeah, if okay. it's at, if I receive. Check it. I first see it. I attach there, and I mention about it. We received it. We came late, but I did not mention it because it told out of my side. Okay. okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, if you give us a room for a few minutes. We'll shut it down. back to order and you know, we're going to deny, deny the city's request on this one if you can carry on with me. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Chairman. And also I need to mention this value 1047000 also land value and I'm making a recommendation. Thank you. 
going to review? No, it's a different one. That's not reviewed. Oh. So this one's not reviewed again? Yeah. You can explain to us why. Okay, I will. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This property uh, built in 1921, effective age 1965. Uh, it has some renovations, and also this property bought in 2015 for 412,000, but it is not an arms sale. It's uh, between parties. I did some company searches for those information. Uh, page number three, you can see the property. And this property has a bigger land lot. Page number four and the middle picture, you can clearly see, can see it's, uh, it has a bigger land lot. And it's a lilac land rate is higher. That's why it depends on land value. And also, once I do this property preview, I found out, and even with the applicant's brief, because we don't have information, income information, applicant's brief, they are collecting rent on parking as the additional income. Even you can see the bottom picture, uh, there is the board say food fair and parking only for the food fair, which is the, uh, in front of the other side of the road. So, and also page number three, you can see they have parking lots in the, after this fence has a separate parking lot. Yeah, we don't have information <coughs> how much they collect and how much they get as a rental revenue, but I accept uh, applicant's numbers as 8,936 as other income, as a parking revenue. That's on information I can rely on. So my new calculation is using rental rates, $17.72, which is the non-chain um, non restaurant. It's a bakery and restaurant type business. And they use the basement, and applicants using $17 for main floor and $4 for basement. I'm using $17.72 for main floor and $3.21 for basement. Uh, we are very close in uh, gross potential income. So, and I also I'm using parking revenue of 8936 using 3% vacancy rate and $7.50 shortfall, 2% other uh, expenses and capitalization is 7%. My new value is 708000 for this property. Uh, but I put uh, land comes to support for land rates, but I'm not seeking any land value or anything. I'm not used uh, doing any presentation over those ones. So based on my evidence, I'm asking to reduce value to 708,000 for this property. Thank you, Mr. John. Good with that, Marcello? Yeah. You accept the rent? Yeah. Okay. All right. Next property is 165 Osborne Avenue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Call number 12021705100. Property address 165 Osborne Street. Property owner Canada Drugs Limited. Property value for 2020 500,000. This property value at 63 property. This is a uh, store. Uh, Property originally built in 1950. It has some addition 
1975, property effective age varies from 19 to 1975. This property has a gross floor area of 7,807, and this is and also I'm looking seeking non-cooperation penalty on this property based on page number eight in uh, law. Uh, and tracking, and also page number my end of brief attached the a sworn mail I send it to them. And this also tell about that we received the 2018 July 25th, but I am not aware, I did not check for the um, we received it or not, but I I cannot comment on if we received it or not because I did not check for that mail. Once I received the non cooperation penalty here. But it says received. It says received. But I I personally not attempt to check it to see whether it's received or not. Because of the non cooperation penalty and the envelope and everything distract me, I thought about it. Are you challenging this one, Marcello? Uh, yes. You okay. good? Any questions then? Um, regarding the penalty? Yeah. Uh, that she, what she's brought forward for evidence. Uh, in terms of the quantum, I have no, no issues. I think I just... Uh, no, I mean, not talking about the penalty. Directly to the penalty. Um, it's the same uh, issues as the previous one, except uh, this one is uh, about a month ahead of the other one. So, um, say it would be the same evidence that we presented for the previous one. In fact, it, I think it includes the file number for this one also. So I included two file numbers in there. Um, I would just be repeating exactly what I said for the previous one. Any questions from the panel members? No. No. Okay. Step up. <laughs> Continue on with your, uh, we're going to deny it, so continue oh. on. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, this property value was uh, 500000 And as my understanding, agent is taking the number. Oh, no. No, no. not this one. Oh. I think you've waited for you to make a wreck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, so this property value has a 500,000 for uh, 2020 value. Page number three. Uh, you can see the location. It is in the Osborne Street uh, and Ward Low Avenue, the corner. And this is the pharmacy and it is... I haven't inspected this property, but I have attached the... Um, Plan, flow plans. The front portion used for the pharmacy, but the back portion is still used as residential. It's the assumption. Um, I'm looking at the pictures and looking at the um, plans. But only we value using income value for the front portion only. Uh, that's why it's, it's uh, so much difference in the square footage. Uh, only 2,656. A portion used for the pharmacy using overall blended $15.54 per square feet using $16.19 for the front portion and $13.89 for the back portion using model driven 6% vacancy, 2% expenses, $6.50 shortfall and 7.45 for cap rate. 500,000 for this property is the original value. I'm kindly asking com confirm the value as it is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Questions for Carol? Uh, Cynthia? 
Um, so you're, you're, only, you're only assessing the... The pharmacy. The front, so pharmacy. Is, the, is the other build, the other detached building on a separate roll? Or? No, it's in the same roll. Um, but uh, you can see it, is, it has a floor plan, but it's only we use the assessment, original assessment we sent out using the front portion only. Um, for the 500000 for this property, it's um, fair value, but we did not get a chance to inspect this property. I'm con asking confirm the value is, it is for this cycle. Uh, okay. We we'll probably review you, this property you, again you, you, for the okay. 2022 okay. cycle, inspect the property, we we'll review it. Maybe at the extra space. Okay, okay, that's all I have, thanks. Okay, so I was going to say, is, is the residential portion occupied? Um, those are the questions, because we cannot con uh, communicate before the hearing. We did not get a chance to uh, review it. But even the comparable sales, um, this 500000 is not the unreasonable value, market value for this property. That's why I'm asking to confirm it is. We need, for sure, this property needs to be inspected. If there is a residential portion, we need to proportion it out and do the revalue it. But we don't know right, right. now. So you don't know if it's got a separate title on the other part either? Uh, no, no. No, it's no separate title on this one. It's a one title. Okay. Okay, so this is here. It's a little complicated once you see it's a one new unit attached. It's a single portion. In so the 787 front. is the ground piece up front, correct? Yeah, and also the main floor in the back main floor, and the second floor in up. And then this and whole the piece at the back of the drawing is the garage. I it's guess. a garage, and also the full basement on this property. That's why it's a gross floor area 7,807. So what, what's this building here on the side? Is this the one that you're seeing? Mm -hmm. No, it is connected. When we come from here, there's the front portion, and this portion used for the farm seat. Well, so this is the back of the building. When the garage is entered from the side. Is the garage is the side. I'm not talking about the garage. I'm no. only talking about the two-story portion and the one-story portion. So the main portion. floor of the of the what looks like a house is also part of the pharmacy. Okay. Yes, part of part of the pharmacy. Okay, so the total square footage for those two buildings is twenty-six fifty-six. Um. Including the residential. It's a. Entire building floor area is 7,807. It's in the first yeah. front page. So close, gross floor is 7,807. Yeah. So it, including basement, but we don't include for the basement for the retail uh, income value. And you haven't included the second story, is that correct? Uh, no, no. No, it's no include in the second story. That's why I'm telling you what we need yeah. for review this property entirely for the next cycle. But 500 is a <coughs> bad value for the market. Okay, Marcella, give, uh, give us a rundown on what you think here. <laughs> uh, can I ask questions? Sure you can. Yeah. Okay. I thought we'd ask you already if you wanted one. Oh, did I? Yeah, you oh, should. Oh, no, no, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, may I direct one question to the yes. assessor? Okay. Yes. okay, so I'm looking at the, um, in, I, I'm a little bit confused here, and I just want you to, to uh, point me in the right direction. Sure. You're saying that the, the size of the building is 7,000? 7, 7,807, including basement. Okay, but I'm looking at the drawing here, and it's actually giving you the, the sizes here. 789.5. I'm assuming this would be square feet because um, that's generally what we work in. And the one beside it is 742.5, and then it has the dimensions for the garage. So Yeah, we don't use the garage. Oh, like, exactly. But when I'm looking at this, I don't see where you could get 7,000 square feet from this. I mean, that would be a, that would be a very large house. I think, as my understanding, the 1,900 is the entire main floor. 
Okay. Yeah, and that's what we have here, 1,900. Yes. And then 756 square feet. Could be the main upper floor. Exactly. But yeah. uh, that's nowhere near 7,000s. Uh, but the full basement. is uh, If I add that one, and three, it's a basement area of 3,051,000. 3,051. That's why I'm telling me this property needs to be inspected. Okay. Yeah. Okay, granted. But the... The footprint on the top portion is 742.5, and the bottom portion is, I believe that says 789.5. So, honestly, I really don't know. Yeah. We don't have all the information in our so, system. We need to go and inspect this property. If we need to proportion okay. it, we need to go and inspect, inspect the property. Okay. So, um, I think we've gone with what uh, the property has traditionally been, which is 2,656, and yeah. that is accounting for the commercial portion of the property. Yes, that's all. Um, if, you, if you turn to this chart, um, this page here, you'll see a couple of charts and a picture. This on the cities or uh, This is mine. Yeah. Um, Yeah, one, uh, I think one more over. Okay. 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 So there's a list of the comparables that we've used uh, in terms of the lease start dates. Again, we're dealing with lease start dates that are fairly close to the reference date. Um, we also noted here that 236 Osborne, which is one of the comparables that we've used, uh, we've purposely put a picture on there for you to look at. I'm sure many of you have seen this building if you've gone through Confusion Corner. Um, it's a superior building, um, so and built in a um, relatively uh, recently. So um, in that sense, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a superior building. So we've adjusted the rent, obviously. Uh, the 1900 portion or the main floor area we used $14 per square foot. The second floor area we used $13 per square foot uh, for a blended rent of $13.72. Uh, if you flip another page over you can see the the income workup. Again, $36,428, that is the income. 6% vacancy, 7% uh, non recoverable, 650 shortfall gives us a net operating income of $30,809 and we've applied a 7.75% cap rate to that, uh, giving us a value of $397,540. That's the present. Questions for me? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did you get the chance to put in this property? I've only walked to it. I, I've walked in it. Uh, okay. I haven't done a full inspection of it. Okay. No. It's uh, it's a store, so it's open to the public. But uh, no, no full inspection. And I definitely haven't inspected the rear portion. That's all my questions. Neil? Uh, no questions. Um, Thank you. So it appears there's a portion of this building that's not being assessed. Is that correct? Um, it, it appears, I think, that that could be possible. Um, I would say that um, I'm not sure that the city has let this go. I, I, I would say that maybe the house is being assessed in another way? I don't, I don't know. No, we don't have, okay. honestly, we don't have a house assessed in this property. Then I would say that it's strictly the basement portion that's not being assessed, correct? Yeah, my opinion is uh, until we go and inspect this property, it's really hard to say any recommendation or any opinion. That's why I did not make any opinion or recommendation. Okay, thanks. That's all I had. Okay, no. <laughs> Okay, we're not getting a whole lot of enlightenment on what... I would say that if the property needs to be uh, reassessed, the city would issue a supplementary on it. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah that would be the next step. Yeah. We could do this property, I mean, this type of property. As of um, today, what we're doing is we're assessing the property as if as we're looking at, at 2,656 square feet of commercial space. Um, so if the city goes out and inspects it and finds that there's more there, then they can issue a supplementary at that point, and then we can look at it at that point also. So the resi residential component must be like 742 square feet. It could be. We if, don't know. Honestly. Again, yeah, honestly, because we don't know. What we have to take into account here is yeah. that if there's a residential portion here, then we would have to portion up the classification, yeah. the tax liability, yeah. which would drop the the portioning rate. Yeah, and this property, honestly, yeah. it's kind of. Um, I can put in the flag to go and inspect in the zone. If it's anything need to be done as a supplementary, we should issue the supplementary yeah. because it's a multi-use. It's a hel helpful for the owner because it's a proportioning is better for the residential. But I cannot make a re recommendation. That's why I did not make any recommendation or anything. And we didn't appeal. Um, classification and liability because again it's never been an issue in the past it only got identified today so it is assumption on the looking at the plans and the looking exactly. at the picture exactly yeah so has the property been appealed before yeah yeah, yeah. in fact this, I handled this, this very same property yeah. I handled this very same property last cycle and they've always used 2656 yeah so we should use 2656 yeah I've got no questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could sit there and try to talk to it all the way. We'll look at the evidence we've got. Let me get my paper clip straight. Uh, 177 Osborne will be next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Boy, do I remember this property. The last one. Row number one two zero two one six seven two zero zero zero. For property address one seven seven Osborne Street. Property owner Moxie Central Inc. Property valued as three hundred sixty five thousand for twenty twenty. Property originally built in nineteen fourteen. Effective age in nineteen forty five. Page number two, property sold in 2016, December 31st, a uh, small, value, small value is 295000 but it's a dollar sale, it's related party. Um, and my page number two has the uh, central information, in comparable. Page number three is a picture of the property and the plan of the property. Moxie's Rentals is the unoccupied portion. Uh, and and the other two units. And my page number four, there is three units. Um, it's a leasable area of 750 square feet per unit. Um, they are collecting gross rents as per the ID. The first unit, permit ID 9, 19161, they are paying, they are collecting $20.91 as a gross rent. And also second unit, they are collecting $18.40 as a gross rent. The third portion is the own occupied portion. Then I'm using model-driven rents of $13.52, $14.67 for the restaurant portion, and again $13.52 for the retail portion. Model-driven vacancy rate of 6%, expenses of 2%, and shortfall of $6.50. Capitalization is 7.65. Property value for $365,000. Um, also, I have attached the rental information as we received from the owner in page number 8 and 9. 
and also agenda pages from assessment department. It shows the non-recoverable expenses is one for one, one per one percent and point six is enough. One point zero six percent is enough for expenses in page fifteen. And based on those evidence, I must kindly ask to confirm the value as it is for this property. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Question, Marcello. Uh, did you look at the gross incomes, or the, the INE, the income expenses yeah. on this? Yeah. So you can see that it's um, basically in the negative, correct? Um, when you take in the rental income and minus all the expenses. Honestly, I did not do that way because I did I did do the other way. Uh, you, I used the monthly rent, reported oriental board. They are collecting thousand. $1,150 per month times 12 divided by 750. That's how I calculated the gross. That's why I mentioned about $20.91 is the gross range. And this information is not enough to me to calculate netted out the central information. So you use then the model rent. I use the model rent, but I'm backing up with the gross rent if they collected twenty dollars and eighteen dollars from the Okay, rent. but those 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 um, rents that you have there should equal the rental income that's taken in for that year, isn't it? Um I did not honestly I did not calculate that way because uh, Because they are maintenance repair and twelve thousand one hundred and thirty six higher maintenance repair and professional fees and it's very low number, forty seventy eight dollars. But my indication is they are collecting gross rent and higher rent amount of gross rent. That's all my indication. Just bear with me while I make sure. a quick calculation here. <laughs> Okay, so I just calculated the rents here, uh, 1150 per month on the top unit, Oriental Bowl, and uh, Black Tattoo, uh -huh. uh, 1307 per month, yeah. times by 12 on each one, that gives me a total of $29,484. Yes, then the other portion is all occupied portion, we and have yeah. to put the rent for that one. Then right. if, we, the, if we put the rent for that one, also okay. then it is higher than what they reported because they don't reported any income on on occupied portion. That's why I'm not relying on this um, expenses chart. Okay, um, so clearly the expenses are high. Um, that is probably an indication of the age of the property. Uh, hydro is quite high, sewer maintenance and repair. And um, actually, they don't report that's hydro. It's the, they reported hydro, water, and heat, right. and cable. Right. Okay. So together. utilities, utilities. Yeah, utilities okay. together is six thousand okay. and five. And there is a, a sizable amount there for repair and maintenance, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, would it's you say that that's a reflection of the age of the property? I don't know. It could be because of the part of the property is on occupied. But your 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 information states that it was built in 1914. Nin 1914. And has an effective age of 1945. Okay. And has the city been in there recently? Uh, I inspect this property two, three years ago. I don't know. Um, I did not check the old in inspection history for this property. Okay. I inspect this property two, three years ago with this business assessment. And your rent comparables. Those are superior for sure, okay. looking at the rent. Um, Where is 137 Osborne? 
Ausgang der Ägypter an aus Bonn. And I'm just going to ask, are you, are you sure that that is an actual net rent on that space? Um, without checking the alternate uh, income expenses made uh, all by myself, I cannot 100% assure, but okay. everyone, um, with, but the assessment department always assures the U.S. and net rent. I assume it's an entrance. Those are my questions. Neil? Um, okay, so there's three separate, and they're, they're, they're subdivided, there's no, uh, no common, uh, uh, no common doors elements. between no, them. Or no, no, there's yeah. three units attached together, it's a whole one unit. Okay. Great, thank you. Cynthia? Just on your map on the top of page three there, so the the outline of the property shows it extending back towards, so does the building end? Building is the uh, dead it box. Okay. It's, 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 so this is just uh, parking back here? or? Yeah, I think they cannot get access. Through that from those okay, sides. yes, okay. Yes. All right. Um, no, that's all I have, thanks. How about the lot that uses next door? You mean the 44? You can see his equipment on it in your picture. Um, I think that one also owned by the same owner. Um, it's owned by the same owner. So, is it strictly a parking lot? I can answer for that question without checking. It's just you took the last parking lot off? Evaluation. Um, but there was one, no, no need of parking to operate. The, that one, the, um, the market, they have a requirement to have a 30 stores to operate the business. There was one street, no parking requirement. It's uh, under those one um, street. So he, okay, so he doesn't, even he though doesn't he's, need a parking. He doesn't need a parking lot. No, but and not at all, because if because they are the same owner, they have some kind of internal agreements, but to operate the business, they don't need a buy. But the young market, they need 30 stores to operate the business. That's why we have to use the reuse the parking. So is it one economic unit? For this one? Yes. No. No, it's a two separate row number. But is it one economic unit when he puts his figures in? Uh, I don't know. I cannot tell it's a one economic unit because we have to check the titles. If there's a different title name, we cannot different ownership on name. Even the same director board, we cannot merge the property to your economic unit. We, we, we are facing that challenge because same owners, two different legal entities. Mm -hmm. We'll hear your presentation. Okay. Um, Again, this is Moxley's Rental, 177 Osborne Street. Uh, you can see the property site map where it's located. So again, the building was constructed in 1914, has a leasehold area of 2250 square feet, and a land area of 4398, so that one's C2. Uh, if you go to the... Which one is it? Um, right here? Yeah. So it would be the one that wraps around. Yeah. Yeah. Was there. yeah. Um, if you go to the page with the chart, the two charts there, um, we've chosen a rent of $10.75. This is some of the comparables that we have. And again, that is for 2,250 square feet. If you go to the second last page, you'll see the summary, the income approach summary. So the total income that we have is 24,188 square feet. Um, 6% vacancy, 7% non recoverable, 650 shortfall rate, and a 7.65 capitalization rate gives us a value of 264,931. Um, net operating income of $20,267. 20, 
just a quickly doing some calculations here with the I and E. Um, the the owner occupied unit is not uh, does not uh, generate a rent. However, in putting in a twenty percent or twenty dollar gross on there and factoring for these expenses, I came out to a net operating income of thirteen thousand one hundred and seven dollars. Um, so we're way above that even in terms of net operating income. Um, I'm comfortable with the value that we put on it. Those are my, that's my brief. <laughs> Question. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, my question, so what do we need to do in Paris? Uh, do you, do you use $10.75 per square feet? Do you have any comparables for this one? Uh, your medium and average is $11.50. Yeah. Um, so if you can look, if you turn over to the effective age column on those properties, um, the only property that has um, an effective age close to the subject is 125 Enfield Crescent. And you can see that the net rent on that one is ten dollars, so we're actually above that. Um, but just going through this exercise that I just did re just now, um, we're coming out with a net operating income of thirteen thousand one hundred and seven, and that's factoring for a twenty dollar uh, gross rent on the owner occupied unit. So we would be actually, if we're going with, you know, an actual comparison, we would probably be lower than what we're predicting here using market uh, comparables. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually good with this $10.75. Um, again, you have to take into account the property's age. Um, obviously it's had, um, it has issues. Um, um, the, there's a lot of maintenance and repairs. Uh, we don't have an idea of what's being, of what's being done there. But uh, properties of this age would normally incur higher expenses. Uh, so I think that's just a reflection of the age of the property. So you're not. So you're saying you don't know this maintenance and repair, which seems does seem to be a fairly high number for the size of the property. You're not sure what that entailed. I do not know what that entails. Um, um, it's under maintenance repair. Unfortunately, we don't. Uh, we don't know. Um, okay. That's However, I, I would say that even if you cut that in half, again, we're still. In terms of the net rent that we're offering here, we're still, um, we would probably still be close to what, uh, close to what we've estimated if you need to take half of that and maintenance and repair it off. Okay, that's all I have, thanks. Yep. Uh, you got one comparable on Osborne, but it's further down Osborne. Um, are these I mean, Pache and Enfield Crescent and, and they're not the same market area uh, in Osborne Village? Well, I mean, I think everybody, there's a, I, I know a few years ago um, there was some award given to Osborne Village as one of the most livable neighborhoods in um, Canada. Um, so it has that going for it. But however, when I speak to clients that I have on Osborne Village, they all point to certain things. There's a problem with crime in the area. Um, these buildings tend to be older. A lot of them tend to be valued or have gross rents on them. Uh, there's a lot of turnover in terms of the clientele or the, the, the tenants in there. So there's not a lot of um, you know, the strong covenants that you see in other commercial areas. Um, I think it's just a reflection of the stock that is in there. It's older. Um, it's harder to maintain. 
And, and this building in particular, I mean, we're talking about a building that was built in 1914 and has an effective age of 1945. But again, um, 1945 is still a long time ago. So we didn't even Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, Okay, now the lot next door, there's some discussion on that. Uh, the aerial photograph shows a bunch of, looks like equipment in there. Is, does Mox, Moxley's use that for store equipment for rental? I, I honestly can't give you an answer. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, because yeah. a lot of these rental places, they have the sort of bigger equipment than a lot of yeah. things. Alright, thank you. And you stole my question from the only thing I want to ask. Something that hasn't known. Got some, but it's. I guess it. What I would say about the rents in, in general is is that if we're going by gross rents, I would I would probably need rents in the thirty dollar per square foot range to get where, to get to a value. Uh, where the assessor, uh, what the assessor is is recommending. So, if I'm looking at rents, gross rents in the twenty dollar neighborhood, uh, and 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 I'm making an adjustment in terms of the maintenance and repair, and that gets me close to what I'm actually proposing, then what the assessor is proposing would require rents substantially higher than than twenty dollars per square foot gross. So. Anything in summation?